there's a general kind of, in the media, there's a lot of that kind of stuff that people don't know about, about numbers. I'm a numbers guy. I'm a dweeb, all right? I apologize. I'm a bit of a nerd about these kind of things. I get really pissed off when people give out about, like, crime going up, when, say, the numbers are definitely going down. And then if you go, but the numbers are going down, they go, but the fear of crime is rising. And you go, well, so what? You know what I mean? Zombies are at an all-time low level, but the fear of zombies could be incredibly high. It doesn't, it doesn't mean we have to have government policies to deal with the fear of zombies. It's ridiculous, for Christ's sake. The NHS, had a, there was a survey in the NHS about dentistry where they found that some people are removing their own teeth. You know? And they brought on some senior dentists onto Sky News and gave out to them and said, how dare, this is terrible, people are removing their own teeth. And this guy stood there and went, well, obviously, systems should be put in place to deal with... Which is stupid. He should have just gone, well, these people are clearly morons at the highest order. <laughs> I mean, who removes their own teeth, for Christ's sake? I'm a dentist. I don't remove my own teeth. You know I mean? <laughs> but there's kind of a notion that everyone's opinion is equally valid. My arse! Bloke who's a professor of dentistry for 40 years does not have a debate with some idiot who removes his teeth with string and a door, right? <laughs> It's nonsense. And they'll have this all the time with medical stuff on the television. You'll have a doctor on and they'll talk to the doctor and be, oh, doctor this and doctor that, and what happened there, and doctor isn't it awful, right? And then the doctor will be talking about something with all the benefit of research and medical evidence, and they'll turn away from the doctor in the name of balance and turn to some quack witch doctor, homeopath, horseshit peddler on the other side of the studio. <laughs> and I'm sorry if you're into homeopathy. It's water. How often does it need to be said? It's just water. You're healing yourself. What do you give yourself the credit? Jesus, homeopaths get on my nerves with the old, well, science doesn't know everything. Well, science knows it doesn't know everything. Otherwise, it'd stop. But it... <laughs> but as well as that, you know, how would they bother? But as well, just because science doesn't know everything doesn't mean you can fill in the gaps with whatever fairy tale most appeals to you. No, you, 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 well, the great thing with homeopathy is you can't overdose on it. Well, you could fucking drown. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It seems harsh, and I used to be much more generous about it, but right now I would take homeopaths and I'd put them in a big sack with psychics, astrologers, and priests, and I'd close the top of the sack with string, and I'd hit them all with sticks. And I really wouldn't worry who got the worst of the belt of the sticks, right? Anyone in answer to the difficult questions in life, the I don't know what happens after I die, or, or please, what happens if my loved ones die, or how can I stop myself dying, the big questions gives you an easy bullshit answer, and you go, well, do you have any evidence for that? And they go, oh, there's more to life than evidence. <laughs> Get in the fucking sack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, herbal medicine. Oh, herbal medicine has been around for thousands of years. Indeed it has, and then we tested it all, and the stuff that worked became medicine. <laughs> and the rest of it is just a nice bowl of soup and some potpourri. So knock yourself out. <laughs> But it is just one of these, it's one of these like, ridiculous things. Like, well, you never see that balancing with really, really hard science. You never see it with like, physics. Like, you never see like, a guy on talking from NASA about a space station. They go, oh, Mr. NASA guy, you, you're, you have a new space station. And they talk, and then they go, right, but that's very interesting. But for the sake of balance, we must now turn to Barry, who believes the sky is a carpet painted by God. <laughs> Barry, what do you think of this space station plan? Well, it's clearly ridiculous. What are they going to do, hook it onto the carpet? <laughs> you're absolutely right, Barry. You're very right. You're very right. You really are. <laughs> Oh, I love that kind of stuff, like whatever. But all of the kind of nonsense of all the fairy tales, homeopathy, chiropractic, all of this kind of stuff, like whatever, ridiculous. And they make billions every year. Nutrition. Oh, I've spoken about this before. Here's my favorite little fact. If anyone describes this ever to you as a nutritionist, just be slightly wary, right? What they're saying may be perfectly true, but nutritionist isn't a protected term. Anyone can call themselves a nutritionist, right? Dietitian is the legally protected term. Right? A dietitian is like dentist, and nutritionist is like toothologist. <laughs> I mean, I could call myself a nutritionist, and I'd be a phenomenally popular nutritionist. People would come from miles around, I'd be going, listen, you look fantastic, let's have a pint. Come on, come on, let's <laughs> You fat bastard, I'll wrestle you, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's ridiculous, and it is just, we, even though there's loads of evidence for these kind of stuff, we still on some level would sooner believe the story that our mother tells us about a woman she knew who had a headache, and then she rubbed a cat on the side of her head, and the headache was gone the next day, right? 
and we'll even take some things for granted about our own health. There's a thing on the cover of the, of the London Evening Standard. The London Evening Standard, uh, during the year, had this thing where it said, 10 symptoms you should not ignore. And you read that, and you're thinking, right, this is going to be something which I've had for a while, but it's been low level, and I've never done anything about it, but it hasn't gone away, and maybe I should get that checked out. That's what you presume it is, you know what I mean? And like, you know, oh, that pain in my arm is still there. I can't seem to clear that chesty cough. The first three symptoms you should not ignore were rectal bleeding, <laughs> loss of height, <laughs> and sudden blindness. <laughs> Who ignores sudden blindness? <laughs> Who sits in the office at lunchtime going, oh, who turned out the lights? <laughs> Oh, I know, I know, I can't see a thing, it's awful. I'm no use to anyone today. <laughs> I like to phone. That's all I can do. That's all I'll be good for today. Oh, don't make a fuss, don't make a fuss, don't make a fuss. <laughs> and by the way, I wouldn't dream of lecturing you on how to live your life. I wouldn't dream of lecturing you about health. That would be, be arrogant of me, like as arrogant as these people. Like, a look at me. I'm a big guy, right? You know what I mean? Like, I'm no model for anyone when it comes to health. I winter well, as you said, <laughs> euphemistically. Uh, and I know this, it gets reflected to me in weird ways. We went to buy a car during the year. Myself and the wife went to buy a car, and we're sitting in the garage, and on the garage forecourt, they had a little two-seater sports car, and I said, listen, I know we're not going to buy it. Can I just sit in it? Because I've always wanted one, can I just sit in it? She goes, all right, you can. And I sat in the little two-seater sports car, and I just looked at her and went, how do I look? She goes, you look like Noddy. LAUGHTER